deconstructing the past to help you make sense of today. Time for another award-winning episode of Pre-Nicene Perspective with your host, Darren Kalama. Christmas, as it gradually became to be known, wasn't officially recognized or celebrated until a few years after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, and the date that was eventually settled on was December 25th, the winter solstice. Now, this may or may not have been intentional, but it's worth noting that Roman Emperor Constantine, while presiding over that Council of Nicaea was a worshipper of the Roman sun god Sol Invictus. Now, we know this because Constantine had coins minted that same year with his image on the front and his sun god on the back. The stories of Constantine's conversion to Christianity have been spread far and wide, some more fanciful and grandiose than others, sometimes changing, sometimes not, but through the millennia, one thing hasn't changed. The coins from 325 AD stamped with his allegiance to the sun god Sol Invictus. Now, we've covered in depth how the council fundamentally transformed Christianity into Judeo-Christianity, essentially stapling chapters of the Hebrew Torah onto the first Christian Bible and creating a confusing compendium of two completely different religions. After all, how do you worship God as revealed to us only through Jesus Christ and the barbaric carnal deity featured in the Torah at the same time? I'll have a link in the show notes if you'd like to get up to speed on the council and its path of theological destruction and chaos. But what about the very important years prior to the Council of Nicaea? These first 300 years of nascent Christianity gave birth to the first Christian Bible in its original composition, the unedited fundamental canon with its single gospel, the Gospel of the Lord, and the original ten epistles of the Apostle Paul. When Christians were being hunted down and murdered by the Judeans and being fed to lions by the Romans, this was their Bible, the only Bible they had. You see, the Judeo-Christian Bible you're familiar with wasn't even invented until late in the 4th century. Now, this era also saw the creation of the first Christian Mass and various rites and sacraments. These were the years right after the death and resurrection of Christ when faith was strong and his life and teachings on earth had been seen and heard firsthand. So, back to our topic, did these first Christians, these pre-Nicene Christians with firsthand knowledge of Jesus, did they, did they celebrate Christmas? Well, the short answer is no, but not for the reasons you think. You see, it would have been impossible. You can't celebrate something that never happened or that you've never heard about. Here, let's take a step back. According to the first Bible, in the very first sentence of the Gospel of the Lord, we read, quote unquote, In the fifteenth year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Jesus descended into Capernaum, a city in Galilee. Now, in other words, Jesus first arrived on earth by descending from heaven and becoming human. And when he left earth after his death and resurrection, he ascended back to heaven. You see, he came to earth the same way that he left it, ascending and descending. This is what the pre-Nicene Christians knew and believed, and it was reflected as such in their first Bible. They would have simply been unaware of the fever dream-inspired scribblings of the Judaizers, which said, Jesus was born from two random Jews in a horse stable to fulfill some vague prophecy of an alien religion. In short, the pre-Nicene Christians celebrated his arrival from heaven. Hundreds of years later, though, the Judeo-Christians would celebrate his quote-unquote birth in a horse stall. It's a fairly important difference. And thanks to a question from viewer mail, we spent a little time digging into the issue and what we found may surprise you. Let's open up that viewer mail and get started. Hi, Darren. I've got a question that's on the lighter side from the COVID topic with the holiday season coming up. I was wondering um, 
what holidays uh, as Marcionites we should be observing, and and maybe if you have some traditions you could uh, share with us, uh, I'd be interested in, in hearing about that. Got my little family here and my, my young ones, and we've always done the traditional Christmas as former Catholic. Yeah, I'm just curious what you do and uh, how you choose to celebrate. Thanks. Now, at first glance, it seems like a simple question, and most of them are until FBN gets a hold of them and starts looking under the hood, and this one was no exception. Now, for starters, Mercy Knights use the pre-Nicene Bible, and that Bible only has one gospel, the gospel, the gospel of the Lord delivered to Paul by Jesus on the road to Damascus. And that gospel doesn't have any stories about prophetic Persian kings and horse stalls and pregnant Jewish women. So we don't have a birth story per se, but we do have an arrival story, a descent story. And Marcionites celebrate the day that Jesus arrived on earth and took on human form when he became human. In fact, he did it twice. Once when he first descended to earth, and again when he visited the apostles after his resurrection and ascension. That visit is also found in the modern Bible. Now, did he need to be birthed by another Jewish woman, or any woman for that matter, when he returned in human form to visit with the apostles after his resurrection? Of course not. He simply descended again just like he did the first time. So the short answer is yes, Marcionites celebrate Christmas. Now let's look under the hood, and before I get into this, as regular listeners know, when we tackle tricky subjects, I lean heavily on Bishop Andrew Theophilus at the church, and I wanted to do that this time as well, but he's traveling to El Salvador of all places. I'll have a link in the show notes explaining what that trip is all about if you're interested. So, he's gone, but when one door closes, another opens, and the Chancellor of the Central Pontiate of the Church, A.W. Mitchell, agreed to help me with this Christmas issue. And as he explained to me, it is in the first sentence of the Gospel of the Lord that we find what direction to go to for our answer. We learn that Jesus descended, first arrived on earth in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar and he arrived in a town called Capernaum, on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. Now, you're going to see why all three of those facts are so important. Now, for us, the 15th year of Tiberius' reign translates into the year 29 AD. Now, that's pretty good. At least it gives us a start. Now we know the year when he arrived, and we know where he arrived. And if we were like the Catholics and other Christians, we would just slap a random day and month on it and call it Christmas. But we can do better than that, a lot better. In fact, the Marcionites can not only tell you the exact day that Jesus arrived, they can tell you the exact hour and minute that he arrived and the exact place that he arrived. Now, do they know this from secret, magical, hidden knowledge, some Dan Brown novel, treasure chest, some Indiana Jones secret scroll? No. The Mercionites aren't Gnostics. Uh, what they believe is right in the first Christian Bible, and anybody can read it for themselves. Now, if I were an evangelical preacher on TV, we would drag this out for a few days or weeks, and pump you for donations, maybe sell some books and videos, maybe some trinkets. Really milk this out before telling you what the answer is and how we found it. But we're FBN, it's not how we operate. Besides, the credit goes to Chancellor Mitchell for telling me in the first place. So let's recap quickly. We have our year of 29 AD and our place of Capernaum, just as the Gospel of the Lord says in that first sentence. Now the fun part. In the years that Jesus was on earth, there was only one total solar eclipse in that region. Just one. Now, would you like to guess what year it happened? Yeah, that would be 29 AD. The month was November. The day was the 24th. The time was 11.05 AM, 
and it lasted precisely 1 minute and 49 seconds. It was 95% visible from Jerusalem and 100% visible at the Sea of Galilee. That's right, right over Capernaum. This is an astronomical fact that doesn't rely on stories or words. It just is. And if you don't believe me, you can just go to the NASA website and look it up. Christmas is about brotherhood and celebrating Jesus' time with us, and there's nothing wrong with being with friends and family on December 25th. But never forget what happened on November 24th at 11.05 a.m. You've been listening to Pre-Nicene Perspective. To learn more about the first Bible and the first Christians, visit theveryfirstbible.org.